Hello, today we will be solving this problem. It's called concert ticket. So there are n concert tickets available, each with a certain price, then n customers arrive, one after another. Each customer announces the maximum price he or she is willing to pay for a ticket, and after this they will get a ticket with the nearest possible price, such that it does not exceed the maximum price. So for each customer we need to find the nearest possible price that is still possible. So for example here, 4 com comes first and we need to find uh, the ticket value that is closest to 4 and that does not exceed 4 and the answer is 3. Here for 8, the closest value to 8 that does not exceed 8 is 8. That's why the answer here is 8. And for 3, and the closest value to 3 would be this 3, but we already gave it to 4, so there are no other values that are less than or equal to 3. That's why the answer is negative 1. So let's go ahead to the drawing board and uh, think about this problem. So let's come, let's start with the different examples. Say we have uh, 7 elements. 1, 2, 7, 3, 3, 4, and 5. And then uh, customers want 5, 6, 5, 6. So that would be 7, 4. Okay. So the first customer is 5 and we need to give it the ticket price that is closest to it. So it would be this 5. And the second customer is 6, and we need to give it the same thing, so it would be this 4. For 5 again, we need to, uh, the next available ticket would be a 3, and for this 6, it would be a 3 again. So basically, if we sort this array, we would notice something. So this array sorted would give us 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5. 7 and whenever we want to find the answer for a certain value we just look for it in this array so for example when we looked for 5 when we looked for 5 first we came here and since we found 5, then our answer was this 5. Then it disappeared. The next value we looked for was 6. And here we couldn't find 6, but the closest value to it was this 4. Then 4 went away. And the same thing for 5. The closest value would be this 3. And then this 3. So if we put our values in a vector, we need to... Uh, allow for this operation of deleting elements, which is not uh, possible directly in vectors. So we need to think about another data structure. And as we saw before, the set data structure allows for insertion and deletion of elements in log n. So insert and delete in log n. So that's the good news. And how could we find the actual position of that element? So we have two issues. The first issue here is that some elements may occur more than once. And we said that's not possible with set because sets contain only one copy of each element. So we could remedy to that by using multi-sets. Or simply by using a set of pair of ints instead of uh, ints. Uh, so for each value, we would have a pair instead of a single value, and here we will have the actual value, whereas here we ha would have an ID that would distinguish uh, identical values. So if when inserting these elements, we inserted them along with their position in the array, 
So this would be something like one zero, two one, seven two, and so on. Then this would be three three, and this three four. So all elements by this construction will be distinct and we won't have this issue. And then next, we need to find for each element the value closest to it. And this can be done through uh, a method on sets called lower bound. So let's check out the CPP reference for that method. So it returns an iterator pointing to the first element in the container which is not to consider to go before. So what does that mean? Uh, so here, if we query for 5, it would not, it would give us 5 because that's the first element that does not go before 5. And if we query for 6, it would give us 7 because that's the first element that does not go before 6. So basically it gives us either that value or the value strictly next to it, following it. And that's the difference between lower and upper bound. The upper bound actually just gives us the next value. It never gives us the actual value. And if a, uh, a value that n does not exist in our set, then lower bound and upper bound would return the same thing. Here is an example here. We're going to insert all these values into our set. And then the lower bound of 30 would give us 30 because uh, it, it is within our set and the lower bound for 60 or, or, or the upper bound for 60 would give us 70 because it disregards the values that are equal to this 60 and this operation is just to erase all the elements between uh, lower and upper so it would erase everything from 30 to 60 and this does not concern us in this case so that's it. Uh, let's uh, look at another example and then construct our solution following that example. So let's say we have uh, 5 and 6. So let's uh, create another example. Let's say we have 5 tickets and 3 customers. And the tickets would have values uh, 5, 4, 3, 4, 6. And the customers would have I would have maximum prices for 4, 4, for example. I'll just erase this. Okay. So as we said, we can start by taking these values and putting them into our set. So our set keeps them sorted. So we're gonna insert this value along with its ID or its position in the array. So we would have a five zero here, then a four one. We need to leave room for the other four coming. And then a four one, then a three two, then a four two. And lastly, a 6-3. So, when I'm gonna start for with finding the answer for this 4, I need, I need to actually include the values that are also equal to 4. And uh, if I used uh, the lower bound with 4, it would actually give me this value. So what I can do instead of, uh, because I need to find the largest value that is also equal to this, that's closest to this. So what I can do instead is to find the lower bound of 5, of 5, 0, for example, and that would give me this value. Then I can just... Uh, see, go to the previous value by sub subtracting one from that iterator and then I would get my answer which is 4. 
Next, I will erase this value because I have used it now. And then the same thing. For 4 again, I'm gonna find the lower bound of 5, 0, which is gonna give me this. I'm gonna go to the previous value, which is 4, 1. So I'm gonna put a 4 here again, and then erase this value. And finally, the lower bound again would give me 5. Then I'm gonna go to the previous value, which is this 3, 2. And then my answer is 3 here. And this goes away. But what if I had another 4 here? If I did, then when finding the lower round, it would give me this. But this value does not have any previous value to it. So there are no values that are less than or equal to 4 at this point. So in this case, the answer for this would be negative 1. And in this case, this iterator, the lower round, gave us like the pointer to the beginning of the set. So if our if the lower bound gives us an iterator to the beginning of the set, that means we could not take a previous value from it, then the answer does not exist. So that's pretty much it. The, let's check out the code. So let's check out our solution. First, we're going to start by reading uh, N and M, the, the number of tickets and the number of customers. Then we're gonna declare a vector that's gonna hold our tickets, our, and the, the, the price that the customers are willing to pay, as well as the set we talked about, which is a set of pair of ints. First, we're gonna scan the ticket prices and insert them in the set along with their position in the array. Then, uh, we're gonna read the, the prices that the customers are willing to pay and for each customer we're gonna find if there is a ticket they can buy so first we're gonna start by finding that possible match which we, we will obtain by uh, finding the iterator to the lower bound of the price he's willing to pay plus one because we want to include also the prices that are equal to the price he's willing to pay. And then if this match is equal to uh, the beginning of our set, that means that the smallest price, the smallest ticket available has a price that is larger than the, the price our customer is willing to pay. That's why the answer is negative one. Otherwise, We'll uh, subtract one from my, from our iterator. That means we're gonna move to the previous value, and then we're gonna dereference our iterator so it becomes a pair of ints, and we're gonna print the first of that pair, which represents the value. And then we're gonna erase that iterator from our set, and uh, and that's it. So let's go ahead and submit. So that worked. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Thank you.